الحمد لله الذي فرض علينا الصيام شهر رمضان وجعله احد اركان الاسلام وصلى الله وسلم على خير الانام نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه البرر الكرام وتابعينا ومن تبعهم باحسان على الدوام اي لحبت في الله as we know ramadan is approaching and ramadan is one of the pillars of islam and fasting the holy month of ramadan is something allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as an obligation upon us in order that we would gain taqwa in order that we would become conscious of him and in fact when you reflect upon ramadan when you fast the holy month of ramadan because of the experience of a little bit of hunger the experience of a little bit of thirst it gives you a breathing time away from a lot of the activities which take up a lot of your time during the day to come closer and reflect upon Allah as soon as Ramadan begins you begin to feel that every act every action counts and in fact we should feel that all the time and that would help us to remove ourselves from sin but Ramadan especially you have that feeling that what you do if you give one penny in charity you feel like it's you've done something that it's something significant and you're in hope that Allah will make that a source of forgiveness for you this shows you the difference of entering the month of Ramadan uh, when we enter the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem about the the obligation of Ramadan qala subhana kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba alladhina min qablakum la'allakum tattaqun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum siyam, that fasting has been prescribed for you. Similar to the way that it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you would gain taqwa. And taqwa ayyala habbati fi Allah, as we've mentioned countless times, taqwa wa azza wa jal is to adhere to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoid his prohibitions. This is taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal in the Salaf of Hadhi Ummah. Ayyul Ahabati Fillah, as we know, as it came in the hadith of Jibreel and in the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, buni an Islam ala khams, shahadatin la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, wa ikama salah wa ita'i zakah, wa hajj, wa sawm Ramadan, wa hajj al bayt. Ayyullah habiti fillah, a shahid in this hadith. The reason we mention it is to show the obligation of Ramadan, that it's a pillar of Islam. It is one of the pillars of Islam. It's something we can't afford to miss. It is something that if we leave it, that can take us out of the fold of Islam. If we leave off Ramadan, we leave it intentionally without the excuse to do so. This is not the deed of a Muslim. This is not the deed of a Muslim. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een were united, especially on the Salat. And some of the ulama mentioned that the Arkan Islam, one of the Arkan, one of the five pillars. But definitely the Salat, the Sahaba were united upon, takfir are the one who left uh, the prayer. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man taraka salat fakad kafara. Whoever leaves the prayer, has disbelieved. So it's imperative to pray all the time. And it's imperative for us to fast the holy month of Ramadan and gain those benefits. Ayyullah habati fillah. From the fawaid or fadail of Ramadan, the great benefits of the holy month of Ramadan is that fasting is one of the greatest deeds that you can do. And it's something that doesn't require much for us from us. Uh, it doesn't require that we have wealth. It doesn't require that we have extra a status or anything. But it just requires that we have patience and perseverance, and that we have the sincerity to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that we do it in conformity to how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted the time from the. Uh, from the sunrise to the sunset. This is it, and that we restrain, that we 
maintain the manners of fasting, that we stay away from looking at the haram, we stay away from uh, speaking about the haram, we stay away from, of course, eating and drinking, and we stay away from sexual activity. All of this during the day of Ramadan. And even after, even when you break your fast, you should avoid the sinful speech, and you should avoid the, uh, of course, uh, anything prohibited. But it's even more prohibited during Ramadan, and we're going to speak spe specifically about this in another one of our halakat, in one of our sittings, uh, as I came across some, some something very beneficial with regards to this when we get to the hadith, and it's a hadith that we will read from Balugh Maram, uh, and a very beneficial hadith, and, and some of the fuayr of the ulama, what they say with regards to this hadith, and... Uh, and, and the benefits that we can take from it. Ayul Habitifillah, from the Fada'il of Ramadan, is that it is a expiation for our sins. So one of the benefits of Ramadan is that it wipes out your sins and it wipes out your evil deeds. So if a mu'min fasts for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking his adjur, expect, expecting the reward and and, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah will forgive him of his sins and as we mentioned before ayah al that the sins that are forgiveness uh, that are forgiven these are the minor sins that the major sins are forgiven by toba. we have to make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to have the the intention to uh, remove ourselves from that sin and those in the environments of sin. We have to have the determination to not go back to that sin. And we have to leave it off and we have to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are some of the conditions for toba. Those are some of the conditions for having our repentance accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. As was narrated in Sahih Muslim, Ruya Muslim fi Sahihi. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنها رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال صلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة ورمضان رمضان مكا مكفرات ما بينهن إذا إذا اجتنب القبائل. so this is the deal أيها الحبيب في الله that it requires removing yourself from the major sins to get that forgiveness. You must make Toba. It's not sufficient just that we fast or just Jumwa to Jumwa or from the prayers, the forgiveness that is mentioned in those hadith from making wudu, from uh, Salat to Salat, from Jumwa to Jumwa, that forgiveness that's mentioned in those ahadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is referring to the minor sins, not the major sins. And this sin, this hadith here gives us the tafsil. It gives us the details with regards to uh, to those other ahadith on how we should understand those other hadith. Those other ahadith are am, they're general. And this right here is khas. This is specific. This nas khas the specific text restricts uh, the more general text. It gives us the details that are required for us to understand those specific texts more. So when we hear that there's forgiveness, because some people they want to argue and debate with you and say, hey, the Prophet said this, that means it's, it's forgiveness for all your sins. But in fact, they haven't studied all the hadith of the Prophet or maybe they're unaware of other hadith and those kawaid and usul that the ulama use in order to uh, deduce uh, a hukum, to abstract a hukum from the text of Kitab Allah wa Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a salat, salawat al khams wal jumwa ila jumwa, wa ramadan ila ramadan, mukaffarat ma baynuhunna ida jtanib al kabail. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the five daily prayers, and Jumwa prayer to the Jumwa prayer, and Ramadan to Ramadan, are things that expiate uh, what came between them. So the sins that you committed between those those times are forgiven. They, it, it expiates those sins. Then the Prophet Sallallahu gave us the uh, specif spe uh, specification, or that which restricts what he said 
and makes bayan and clarifies for us the other text. He said, He said, as long as you avoid the major sins, letting us know we have to avoid, we in order to have our major sins uh, forgiven, and to get that expiation, we have to avoid the major sins. But in addition, this shows us that those major sins require Toba. That that mukafarat bain of hunna is for the minor sins. This expiation is for the minor sins. وفي صحيحين من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. So in Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever fasts uh, Ramadan imanan wahtisaban gufra luhu or gufra luhu ma taqadam min dhimbi whoever fasts Ramadan with iman faith wahtisaban you know, seeking the, uh, 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 having a positive, uh, a positive outlook and thinking that Allah will reward them. That Allah will forgive them of the sins that preceded that time. And this was that a Muslim, وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا and we already mentioned these hadith in our last sitting, but we're going to bring a little bit of extra details here. So whoever, and this was in uh, the uh, in Sahih Muslim, in one of the ruwayat in Sahih Muslim, that whoever uh, stands during the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, Iman Wahtisaban, you know, seeking, uh, believing in Allah and seeking His uh, reward and forgiveness, then Allah will forget. Then he will be forgiven of the sins that preceded this time. So, in looking at these ahadith, we see that the forgiveness for our sins, as was mentioned, requires two conditions. Shartan. The first condition is that. أَنْ يَكُونَ الصَّائِمْ قَدْ صَامَ إِمَانًا بِاللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَرِضَى بِفَرِيدَةِ فَرِيدَةِ الصَّوْمِ عَلَيْهِ The first condition, أَيُّ الْحَبْتِ فِي اللَّهِ is that the person fasting fasted with faith in Allah إِمَان بِاللَّهِ that first pillar of إِمَان that they had faith that Allah exists, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching them, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure, and being pleased with the obligation that Allah has placed upon us, which is fasting. So this is a part of their iman for the one who wants this forgiveness. Ashar Tathani, the second condition, Ayyul Habati Fillah, أن يكون صيامه احتساب للثواب والأجر فلا يتطرق إليه شك في هذا الثوب أو يكون هناك كريا للصيام أحبتي في الله The second condition is is that the person fasting that they are fasting, seeking the reward and believing that Allah will reward them and give them ajr, give them blessings and reward. And that they have no doubt that they will receive reward. Imperative for us to remember this. Don't forget this, ayyul habatifillah. Don't be arrogant and say, well, I'm fasting, I can do this, I can do this. Oh, well, for sure my fasting accepted. No. Be humble and be fearful. But also at the same time, don't have doubt about your fasting. 
Don't doubt that Allah will give reward for the fasting because you strove for his sake if you fasted for his sake. So that's why we got to get our intentions uh, right and make sure we're, seek, we're fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have husn al that we have a, a positive, optimistic uh, look outlook about our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will reward us and give us his favor and blessings. And don't have any doubt about that. And at the same time, that we do not dislike fasting, that we love it, that we love and gain that benefit. What I realize for myself is usually the first few days, especially in this hot climate, and we're at a hot, we're fasting, it's summer. Me personally, I'm here in the Arabian Peninsula and it's very hot. Today it was 100 and at least 104, probably 100, over 110 degrees, I'm sure today was. 110, 100 to 114 degrees, I'm sure. So it was blazing hot. In Ramadan, we expect to be hotter and we'll be fasting. Those first few days can be difficult for us, a trial. But after a while, you really begin to taste the, the love, the, especially if you benefit from your time and you're not sleeping your whole Ramadan or something. But if you're benefiting from your time, you begin to see how valuable your time is and how much you can get done when you're not focused on eating and drinking. Just think how much time we spend. We're always planning to cook. We're planning to eat. After that, we're planning to have a snack. Then we just have a snack. Then we plan another one. Then we're snacking in the kitchen. We snack in the living room. We gotta watch this, so we're eating grapes and we're doing this. All of this time we spend eating, eating, eating. We spend so much time and prep preparing food and being around it. But when you have no relationship with food now, no eating and drinking, Allah favors you. If, if you have barakah placed in your time, you'll be going to the books. You'll be benefiting from, from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Kalam of the Ulama, the Salaf of this Ummah. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een Beginning with the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een That you'll be benefiting from your time And of course the best is the benefit with the Quran But perhaps Maybe you're doing some Talib al-Ilm Some ulama they teach during Ramadan They go to Riyadh al-Saliheen I know Shaykhana Ibrahim Rahili We used to do Riyadh al-Saliheen with him in the Haram Shaykh Abd al-Razak Shaykhana also used to do uh, Adab al-Mufrid and other books in the Haram. So some of the ulama, they busy themselves with ilm as well, as well as the Qur'an. So it doesn't negate reading the Qur'an. You can do both. But the point is, is have barakah in your time and use your time wisely. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to make Ramadan, bless us to benefit from Ramadan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to benefit from that which we speak about and practice that which we preach. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.